Greetings to all you folks over the globe or flat earth or wherever you may find yourself. What astral projection or anything. Let's try after the most difficult part for myself to study was economics. What well, most difficult, maybe not, but the most um, elaborated studying I did on economics because the saying goes if you want to know what's going on in the world follow the money so after myself eating a lot of third sandwiches of so-called economists I'm going to try to explain to the best of my ability how I see things working at least around here for starters and most probably within much laws across the globe to some modifications here and there of course and of course the dealings and uh, laws and such and principles being kept in the dark to most people so let's start off uh, my wife art yeah. and Within dealings, I would like to start off with making the difference between two persons. A natural person and a rights person. So a natural person would be just the human in flesh and blood. And those are registered under the citizens, register in city hall, wherever they live. And the rights person can be any company that is obliged to be registered under the court of commercial law in which the district they all uh, uh, occupy and make their businesses and they must have a business plan or a commercial plan and act accordingly to it. So a natural person would not be written in capitals, it would be just the first letter of capital and the last small um, vowels or yeah and of course the rights person can be any company that is all capitals probably in America like such but in most countries it should be like such and of course that is why the big business owners never lose their personal belongings because their personal belongings are written under their natural person and their company belongings are written under the rights person. So whenever the company goes belly up, the curator comes in, makes the inventory, splits up all the leftover um, monies, credits uh, and uh, commodities of the company and he divides it under the, debt, uh, the creditors which of the debtor, the company must provide the debtors, uh, the creditors. So that's why bad banks come up, like uh, Lehman Brothers. They was uh, the scapegoat for all the bad banks that was acquired or accumulated in America. So Lehman Brothers got split up totally. All the assets got divided, both the debts and the credits, under the other banks. And whatever was left of debt for Lehman Brothers themselves. Uh, is still uh, being curated, probably, most probably. So you have the natural person and the rights person. And that is about the most basic things in dealings for people. They make up a company, they make a whole lot of loans, they make a whole lot of profit, they make a whole lot of with making product. And on the other hand, they have their debtors for everything that is acquired to be making the product delivered and such and of course taxes and stuff but never mind that so let me take you over to the next part of uh, how uh, dealings can happen and I'll probably a solution to to the Byzantine um, hashing protocol that is used with crypto at least the blockchain crypto I'm not talking about hashing anything else or hash where I, I don't know it's called but let's just say you have the Byzantine protocol and let's say you have uh, the possibility of making trades with two persons or four persons. 
Otherwise than that, there should be no more persons involved. You have the two-person trade-off and the four-person trade-off. That is uh, just the basics of economics and trading to make a product and shit happen. So let's say you have the two-person trade-off. That can only happen between either two natural persons or two right persons. It can, it can never be a natural person and a right person, and it can never be yeah, the other way around. But let's say you have the local custom here with two natural persons making a dealing. And so we call that principle butter with fish. And butter with fish means you have the buyer on the one hand of the trade and the second person is the supplier. The buyer has the credit that is fully his own, so it's not under a rights person written. And the supplier for the same, his supply is under the natural person written and never under the rights person and vice versa for two rights persons. It goes like that. And butter with fish principle means the buyer comes up with the full amount of what he wants to buy and the supplier comes up with the full amount of the commodity he wants to provide or the service. You make the dealings on the call, you make the appointment on where to meet and then the deal happens and the trade-off happens there and then and that's butter with fish principle. Now let's go over to the dealings with four persons. Now I have my whiteboard. So we have the Byzantine hashing protocol. So you have four sides to it, like that. And in the middle, you have the goal. The goal can be anything, right? See? So you have four persons, and also with the trade-off of two persons, you need product, you need credit, you need transport, and you need labor to make the product. And you need credit to pay the transport and you need credit to pay the labor. So, on four sides, every four of them being either a rights person or a natural person that can be made up in contracts. But each of the Byzantine standoff or hashing solution has its product, its credits, its labor and its transport. So product, labor, or credit, and transport. Here too, credit and transport, product, labor, credit, yeah, never mind. So within this hashing protocol, you can also make a, like a conference call with four persons. And let's say the goal is to transport something. Okay, one guy says, I have the transport here in my vehicle or station of um, trucks. Um, I need so much credits. Who wants to provide credits? You see what goes on. And to reach the goal, one wants the products, somebody wants to deliver the transport, this guy wants to do the labor. And whatever happens within this hashing protocol, you can obviously see that the goal can be acquired with making the right dealings among all four of them if uh, plenty is provided within this Byzantine um, hashing protocol. And of course, once the hash is fully made and the goal is on paper or on digits, fully, fu fully transactable, then you have the block. So in real life dealings, it's nothing more than that to it. So do you need legislation? Do you need a law? Do you need people siphoning off anything from trinkets of anything else? You know, that's not really needed and that's what crypto is about, but you can do it in real life. So let's take for instance, you go to a barber or no, maybe not some, something else. Uh, what can I come up with? Um, uh, maybe let's take service. Let's say I want to uh, make a, a, a journey 
with a, or a trip to some place abroad. So I need the product and that's the journey. Somebody comes up with the credits and then you have the transport and what would the labor be of this service of making a journey with a group to a so here is the journey or the trip so you have this guy providing the labor the labor means um, writing everybody in the trip um, acquiring their credits so he gets the credit to the labor and he makes the dealings to make everybody in the hotel um, so also with the labor goes um, people uh, getting their rooms then you have um, some guy saying I'll provide the credit no you have all the people coming in one group here providing the credit to make the trip this guy provides the credits and the labor also goes uh, to eating sightseeing transporting so let's say this guy okay I look for all the transports on the trip and he says okay I look for the credits to those transports of the trip and he says uh, well I was doing the transport to make the journey so you do the trip yeah, you see how it goes this is the hashing protocol in real life and how smart contracts where everybody is like I don't know you know whatever comes around in these trade dealings like collateral overheads what else can there be um, bribes ah, you know how bribes go abroad in places that are not as quite heavily uh, regulated like Belgium or most places in Europe well I'll just gonna keep it at this we're 12 minutes into it I hope I provided you with quite good information that can get you going along and rip me off and come up with your own ladies and try to make a buck all right see ya